Hi everyone. I'm Lynn Holsinger. I'm a member of the Artist Alliance at Oceanside Museum of Art in Oceanside, California, uh, a suburb of San Diego. Because Oceanside Museum of Art is hosting its first plein air festival this July, we thought it'd be fun to talk about it with artists that are familiar with the plein air style of painting, as well as someone who has participated in festivals. In this spotlight interview, I'm talking with Tony Williams, a profess professional artist and muralist for over 20 years. I've known Tony for quite a while. In fact, I am the proud owner of one of her pieces and have admired her beautiful impressionistic paintings, many of which are painted outdoors in plein air. Tony is an active member of many art organizations and is also a signature member of the American Impressionist Society. Okay, so Tony, I know from our previous conversations, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. I know from uh, our previous conversations that um, you were a kid who grew up loving to draw and paint, and you were fortunate to have parents who were creative and encouraged yeah. your own creativity. So that's terrific. Um, I was kind of curious about how you developed your impressionistic style of painting. Ah, that was um, a wonderful uh, experience. It, uh, it really wasn't me. Um, thank you, Lynn, and thank you for having me, by the way. I'm, I'm thrilled to do this, and I'm thrilled about the uh, plein air event that Oma will be sponsoring. It's going to be just great to have something in San Diego. Thank you. Um, the Impressionism part of my whole career was ever-present, and when I went to college, I had a wonderful base. This was in the late 60s into the early 70s. I had a great, great classical uh, training in the fine arts. I had uh, lots of figure drawing, lots of studying and painting like classically rendered pictures, uh, paintings of past masters, and also color theory, the groundwork for all uh, good art uh, studio work. And, but the thing was, I was in a small college outside of New York City, about 90 miles, and all of my professors were budding artists in New York City. And what was happening at that time were people like Andy Warhol, Mark Rothko, all the abstract expressionists were just blossoming. Uh, so, of course, I went along with it. We all did. That, that's what was encouraged as, as a body, as a student body, we were encouraged to move forward into abstract painting, which I did. And... Uh, but long story short, when I did get out on my own, um, I didn't work as an independent artist because there's no money in it. I worked uh, just side jobs. I'd sell a few impressionistic style paintings along with a regular bookkeeping job, which I did faithfully for 25 years paying bills. But it was always part time, so I moved into the mural work at that time and, and did the two job thing. But I was happy because I was painting. Anytime pushing painting around is involved, that was very satisfying. And um, so I honed my own impressionistic style, which is everything that our California impressionists did at the turn of the century. I have their books, I had tons of books. I would study their work. I would study brushwork against brushwork. I would, I would study the shortness of them. The thing that defines Impressionism is short, colorful, con 
uh, complementary color. And I always loved it. And living in California and being a tomboy was the perfect setting for a plein air artist. So I found my niche. I found my tribe of people. There's uh, San Diego plein air painters, better known as Papasan. And I wangled my way into them, a very closed group, but um, dedicated. So, and there you go. So in retirement, I can full-fledged dedicate myself to private teaching and to honing my skills. So I'm kind of curious, uh, is Impressionist painting always, uh, does it always demand outdoor painting? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, it's a tool. Okay. Yeah. Outside is where you get the idea of fresh color, natural sunlight. Uh, if you paint outdoors, you're dealing with sun, you're dealing with clouds, uh, atmospheric perspective, which is distance, volume of air, the texture, the smell, the feel of the air. And so you, you really limited, we're all in agreement. You have two, three hours max to do a plein air painting because the sun is constantly changing. Um, there's a phrase called uh, chasing the light, and um, it does happen because um, the sun is moving. It changes what you are seeing, the shapes, the shapes, the structure. It doesn't change the tree or the bush, but the shadows, where the shadows are cast, the reflective light on the object. So a lot has to be said, and you have to keep that in mind. But say if you've got a good, we call it a field study, you can bring it into the studio. Now, make your adjustments. You have your color notes. Photography has been invaluable since the 1800s. Yeah. Um, there's a steady scene. And then in the studio, you can develop a piece. And that is what the paintings that really wind up in a in a sort of a California art club or oil painters of America event will usually be finished studio work and not necessarily plein air. There are the uh, plein air event that I will be participating in um, the Borrego Desert Plein Air Invitational, sponsored by the Borrego Institute of Art. Uh, that work will be done in seven days outside. It will not be submitted if it's a studio piece. So that's a different criteria. We do all agree it's okay, like if you've got a really nice studio piece, if you want to take your color notes and your photographs and you go home and just finish it off, sure. that's acceptable. Right. And you have to love the outdoors. You have to love the, the camaraderie. Um, you see a friend over there. You're not talking, but you talk about your experience or come here, give me a quick critique. Right. It's, it's, uh, uh, I love competing at that level. It's very satisfying to me and meeting the other people as well. That's right. why I'm so looking forward to Oma's yeah. event. Right. Yeah, so, uh, okay, so it's obvious that you really do like being outdoors. You said that you're a, a tomboy. <laughs> um, could you tell us a little bit about your painting process and how you set yourself up to go out to paint? How yes. How long you paint outside, that sort of thing? Yes, most of us all carry a uh, portable setup. Um, we all have backpacks that will have our mediums, our paints, brushes, paper towels, water, sunscreen, bug spray, and anything else you might need. I always carry uh, pliers for some reason. Pliers come in handy. I have a small knife. Uh, it goes in the backpack, and we we all have, for the most part, 99% of us, you, you learn by trial and error. It's a tripod, a camera tripod, which also accommodates 
Pashad boxes, which are nothing more than a paint box. And there's wonderful different brands that you can try out. Um, I love the Gorilla Painter plein air box. It, it suits me. There are um, the EZL. I get this question a lot. Um, there's a local California uh, company. I believe I might be wrong on this. Well, it was started by two plein air painters and it's a strata easel wonderful making a big hit oh, here in southern california I'm so that. that's basically it to be mobile yeah. you can't just drive out of the yes you can you can drive out of the you know pull the car over and step out but personally um my friends and i like to be mobile we like to walk in we get the exercise yeah we get away from the public um so yeah that's that's it you you should be mobile and light not dragging suitcases around <laughs> but it's the start if you want to drive a suitcase around <laughs> you can start rollers <laughs> so, so some of the people that are uh, watching right now they may be um painters of varying levels. Do you have any tips or tricks for somebody that has been thinking about painting plein air but hasn't really done it yet? Anything you can suggest? Yeah, good I've question. Align, align yourself with fellow artists of like mind. Uh, we have a number, all cities, uh, all areas have a number of uh, either Art Guild, San Diego Art Guild is wonderful. The Rancho Santa Fe Art Guild is wonderful. There's La Jolla Art Association. And there will be groups of people that will meet to go outside and paint on a regular basis. So you can join one of those. That was the best tool available to me when I decided to start plein air. Painting. Yeah, so you had a chance um, to talk to other people that were experienced and exactly I learned from them what's the most efficient equipment uh, you learn what paints you like there's a myriad of paints there's a myriad of brushes you the one famous quote from uh, Ken Oster wonderful uh, Laguna Beach painter he's since passed away uh, he said, know your tools. I visited him in his studio, and at the time he was working on limited palette, which means only a certain amount of colors involving the primaries and white. Uh, it, he, he was working on these massive pieces, and his brushes looked like a hairbrush that was soaking in <laughs> years of paint. Wow. Hey, it worked. Yeah. So when I teach, I advise people to choose the brushes that they like if they're new, then a variety of brushes, and become familiar with them. And don't buy cheap paint. It'll it it goes it doesn't go a long way and you'll find yourself frustrated. That's what I that's my only indulgence. I buy good paint, mm -hmm. cheap brushes, and uh whatever surface you love to work on there's a variety of them just practice practice it's all practice yeah i heard that actually about uh really i heard heard that early on in my painting career about really invest in the paint you know they have student quality professional quality get the good stuff and uh don't mm -hmm. worry about wasting paint just practice 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 right Yes, Emil Grupp said, uh, Gruppe said a wonderful thing. He said, paint like a millionaire. And you know we're all starving artists. I don't know one wealthy so painter. Yeah. <laughs> it's like being a superstar. Yeah. There's very few superstars. Right. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about plein air festivals. Uh, what do you like about taking part in plein air festivals? I know you've attended or been part of them uh, over the years. I love the competition. I love the camaraderie. Uh, I love the structure. You completely absorb yourself in painting for five to seven days. And it's, it's an experience I'm sure others would feel like a, 
a vacation in Hawaii for a week or two would be an all-encompassing experience. Um, I learn so much. I take away from others. I learn from others. And I love the competitive spirit. So we're all a team. We all speak. We eat together. We play together. But when we're out in the field, everybody's doing your own thing. You're not constantly talking. You have to. You have to hone your skill. But you're still united, like the proverbial baseball team. Everybody has a skill in the game, and um, we love to see. Ah, oh, God, you're such a good colorist, or how your composition is just always so right on and and the stories that people have to offer are marvelous so not that i'm a people person i wouldn't say but everyone that plein air paints uh i haven't met a bad one in the whole lot very wonderful so i know that some festivals are by invitation only as is the borrego springs um uh invitational but Oceanside Museum of Arts event is inviting people at all levels to join in. Uh, do you have any suggestions for someone who is participating for the first time in a plein air festival? Oh, yes, I have the best advice. Just do it. Forge ahead without fear. It's not a it's it. It's not who's going to whose painting is the best. I mean, the judge will eventually do that, but the experience alone will be so worth it. Don't be afraid. It's like my mentor always used to say, it's only paint. What are you afraid of? You know, so you make a lousy, we all make lousy paintings. I can't believe after painting my entire life virtually, I can go out on the field, see a scene I've done before, and I come home and go, I know I I don't know how to paint. Um, it's a marvelous experience, and I love the fact that Oma is doing non-invitational. And San Clemente Art Association also has a wonderful. There's like hundreds of artists from amateur. They even have a level for uh, high school students, which is wonderful. Um, at all levels. So you've got the really good painters in with the people that are doing it for the first time. And it's a marvelous, you know, we're all thrown together because we want to be outside and try this wonderful thing of interpreting the world in two dimensions and color. I highly recommend it. And, and for a first time event, definitely go for it. Don't, there's nothing to, nothing to hinder you just go you don't have to turn in your paintings if you don't like them <laughs> experience the experience try out the journey it might be for you it is about the journey isn't it not necessarily not always patient so much of life is like that hey tony uh this was great thank you for talking with me about oh, this thank you. Uh, i learned some stuff i didn't know before so thank you thank you um, I'm going to be posting information on you and the festival online, but why don't you tell anyone who's watching a little bit about how they can find you and take a look at your paintings. I'm on Instagram and Facebook, Tony Williams Art. I have a website, uh, TonyWilliamsArt.com. And I live in Solana Beach, California, very accessible. If you ever want to visit me, see my studio, ask me questions, uh, I am loaded with information. <laughs> Don't ask me how to cook, but I know about painting, and I'd love to share it. There's no hidden secrets. There's wonderful teaching tools. So, yeah, come and visit me. I'd love to show you my studio. Oh, again, thank you so much, Tony. Um, thank you very much. And uh, Oceanside Museum of Art, their 2021 Plein Air Festival runs from July 24th to the 31st of this year with selected pieces going on display at the museum August 1st through October 10th. Uh, for more information, you can go to OMA online. Uh, thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, we hope to do more of these in the future. Thanks. Thank you, Lynn.